Welcome to Beyond Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Petralis, and we are super excited for today's guest. Uh, this person has been, so many people have reached out to me about this, this guest that we're having on, and I watched like three Instagram videos of her boxing and training, and I was like, oh my God, what's her, like, let's get in touch with her, like, it was awesome. And 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 I'm big on social media. I love going on social media and like really looking at how people, you know, put themselves out there and show what they're doing, how hard they work. So I think this is going to be a great conversation, a fun episode for my audience, but also getting to know your audience a little bit too, which will be a lot of fun. Um, they box out of Sonny's Boxing and Fitness in Middleton, Mass. I think I used to go play like miniature golf in Middleton a lot. Um, undefeated, 6-0-1, uh, and trainer is Danny Oliver. Um can't wait for you guys to see. Can't wait to point you to her social media page so you guys can see uh, what I saw uh, before we call her about two minutes after. Uh, so without <laughs> further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Shayna Fapiano. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. And, uh, you know, I was even nervous about just doing your last name there. We talked like right before we came on. I was like, oh, my God, how do you say it again? So did I say it 100 percent correct? Yeah. God, okay, I'm not a complete (laughs) idiot. Uh, So, you know, it's so interesting. I gave you the intro that I gave you because, yes, when I first went on to your social media page, I was like kind of blown away. Like if I'm being totally honest with you, because I think you do such a good job in obviously showing off what you do and how you train in boxing and, and how good you are, but you also market yourself, I think really well. And I've seen you in a lot of different advertisements and kind of working and wearing different things. I know Dana neighborhood, uh, brand. Um, I have a ton of stuff. I mean, he's the greatest guy in the world. Um, so, so I know I saw you wearing that stuff, but just talk, I, we could jump right into that, but I, you know, so we really want to talk about your social media a little bit, um, you know, how, who you are obviously, but then how you really kind of like market yourself out there and get yourself out there as a boxer. I'm just really curious. So <clears throat> I think that it's really important that I kind of show my face and stuff too, because uh, boxers have such a stigma of like, you know, having messed up faces from getting hit a lot and things like that. So I try to use my looks to my advantage. So that's why you see me post a lot of like the modeling pictures and like, you know, things like that, because I feel like it's important to show both sides. I think it attracts a little bit more attention. It can get my face out there a little bit more, which will give me better opportunities and bigger fights. Yeah. And I think that that's great, you know, because like me doing this podcast, like a lot, what I put out there is like my life too. Like I put out there how I am as a dad um, and, and, you know, how I kind of conduct myself as a person. So putting yourself out there and showing many different facets of who you are, I think is like, what's so important about social media. And that leads to bigger and cooler things. Like I saw you doing, and I think they call it like a forearm chug, the Gronk brothers, but you were doing our forearm (laughs) chug with Vu. Um, and I don't know if you do a little work with him or with them, but, uh, I thought that was kind of cool because again, you're a professional boxer, you're rocking it out there. We'll be talking about that shortly, but again, putting yourself up out there and and advertising yourself is pretty cool too yeah so uh gordy and viewer they were one of my sponsors um and so i've done a little bit of work and stuff with them they're awesome they're always so good to me um but yeah i loved working with them and i agree i think it's so important to show like the personal side of my life and stuff too and you know so that way people can relate to me in other ways and and see that they can really do it too if they wanted to Yeah, absolutely. Um, And we'll jump into it. I mean, you obviously jumping into boxing, like I always find this so interesting because it's not something that like you go to high school, for example, and there's a boxing team or, you know, that you can get into that. I mean, it's really you kind of taking those steps forward in in pursuing that. So I'm just curious um, because you are involved in so many different things. Like where did your love for boxing come from? And maybe a little bit of your backstory. I know you're from Everett, Mass. And you know, home of high school football in Massachusetts in the last like 30 years. But, um, you know, talk a little bit how you got into into what you do. Um, so I never like expected to get into boxing. I was always, um, to be honest, pretty afraid to get hit in the face and pretty afraid to hit other people in the face. Um, so it wasn't ever anything that crossed my mind. I played um, softball. I was a cheerleader for many years. I was the quarterback of the football team in high school, the power of football team. I ran track. Um, what else did I do? I did so a lot you're of an athlete. Sports. You're a good athlete. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're a good athlete. You're a lot of different sports, but nothing, to be honest, ever stuck with me like boxing did. Um, and I, I got into it basically because when I 
growing up, I, I was bullied. I was really, gave me a really, really hard time. Um, and because of that, I always felt I had really low self-esteem, low confidence. So my mom actually one day said, you know what, like enough is enough. Like stop basically cowering at home and crying and feeling bad for yourself. Let's go. Like, let's get you some self-confidence. Let's bring you to a boxing gym, you know, see how it's, see how it goes. So I went into a boxing gym and tried it for the first time and worked my ass off. I ended up throwing up, but I loved it. And then, um, I ended up finding another gym and another coach at the time. And I honestly fell in love with it. The more I did it, the more hooked I felt, the more confidence I was getting. And that's such an addictive feeling. So I think, I think boxing just made me fall in love with boxing. There wasn't anything in particular. It was just mm -hmm. doing it. And it was the feeling that it made me feel. Now, when you jumped into it, was it more for something like you as the training aspect of it went as far mm -hmm. as obviously self-defense, like you, you were mentioning yeah. somewhat. And obviously the training of it is, I mean, boxers are just, they put their bodies through. I mean, it's, it's insane. It's just insane. Yeah. Cut and wait. We'll talk about that. But um, for you, when did you realize like, hey, I'm actually pretty good at this and I think I could pursue a, a career in this? So my first moment where I felt that was my first sparring session ever. I was absolutely shitting my pants. <laughs> Still do sometimes, by the way. That doesn't really go away. Um, and I jumped in and it was against this girl that was like, everyone knew at the gym and she was like one of the top dogs there. And she showed up with her girls and her crew. And I was just there with my coach. And I was like, all right, you know what? We're just going to go for it. Um, and I ended up hitting her with a really good shot. And she got out of the ring and left crying with her friends. And I was like, all right. No. Kind of like this. <laughs> How old were you? How old were you? Uh, I think I was probably 21 at the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was brand new. I'll tell you what. It was definitely a lucky shot. But whatever it was made me love it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen. Especially when it, I don't know. You ever seen the movie Warrior with like Tom Hardy? Um, <laughs> yes like that scene when he kind of like steps in the ring and like knocks that dude down. That's, I got that vibe kind of like when you were telling that story a little bit. Yeah, that's how I felt. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's great. That's great. Um, So a big part of like, you know, getting into this and falling in love with it, I'm sure is obviously the place that you're working out at or the people that are training you. I had mentioned at the top that Danny Oliver was your trainer. Um, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to maybe just give a shout out to who you work with a little bit, because as you know, who you are as a boxer and who you are as an athlete and how hard you work is great. But those X's and O's, I mean, that's what we cover with high school sports and college sports. Having a great team around you too is nice to be able to um, feel comfortable and growing a, as an athlete and as a boxer. So give you a little opportunity to give your team a shout out. Um, so, so you can give them some love here. <laughs> yeah. So about, Oh gosh, when was I, I walked into this gym in June and I was probably 30 pounds heavier than I would have liked to be. I had just come out of retirement. I don't know if you know that. Uh, well, so I fights. saw a gap in between fights, and I was going to ask you about that. So that kind of, yeah. okay, that makes sense then, yeah. So I came out of retirement. I really wasn't sure what I was going to do and, and and you know, what direction I was headed in. I just knew that I needed boxing back in my life. Um mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to come into a place like Sonny's. Um, it's, it, it really is like a family here. Like everyone's super nice, you know, everyone by name, everyone jokes, like real ball busting kind of place. Yeah, um, yeah. So right at home the second you walk in and then I met Danny and he, he was also a fighter himself. He was uh, best pound for pound in new England. He's had over a hundred amateur fights. He's, wow. he's, Cool. Yeah. Multiple time golden glove champion. He is an unbelievable fighter athlete and honestly an even better coach. And what he did for me, like working with him, it really made me relove boxing again, which is crazy. And I, I didn't even know I could, I could get that spark back, but working with him, I, I learned something new every single time. I'm not doing the same things all the time. I'm constantly learning something new, constantly being challenged um, and honestly, I just feel super lucky to have him as my coach because I know working with him, with his knowledge, his boxing IQ, like his athleticism, everything that he's going to get me to that world title that I'm so desperate for. 
Yeah. That's, I mean, it's unreal to hear that because like, so you, so you say that, okay. So you came out of retirement, you came to this gym, you started working out with Danny. So compare yourself as a boxer before you retire to maybe now, like what's so different maybe about you as a fighter that you just maybe feel different in the ring. I think it was totally the confidence aspect of it all. Um, I don't think I had the same confidence that I did uh, that I do now before. And like, I just think everything changed. Like when I tell you walking in here, the way that, you know, my teammates and my coach and everyone makes me feel, I feel like I could do anything. I can fight anyone. I can take on any challenge and I just feel so damn good doing it. So it all really comes down to like the confidence, the mental aspect. It's mm -hmm. the sport is so mental. So if you surround yourself with the right people, like you could, you can go to the moon. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I feel so lucky and I know that I'm in the right place with the right people that are going to get me where I want to get to. Are you in your gym right now? Is that all the stuff behind yeah, you yeah. on the wall? Oh, yep. so that's like, that. it's like your old school field gym too. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's sick. It's like, you know, it's so crazy. It's got the old school feel, right? And except it has like this beautiful, huge ring and like these beautiful bags and like all this great. but it still has that bungee bus and gym feel and like the trainers everyone it, it's just it's such a great place you gotta come over it's a great place yeah we'll definitely come down we'll have to maybe get you in a sparring session at some point yeah. i mean i most certainly won't come in the ring with you you'll knock me out <laughs> like 20 seconds and that because i'm running around for like 16 of it uh <laughs> um <laughs> So obviously to me, like when I do this podcast and I, I, I get my guests have heard this a million times, but like my audience is like, oh, here we go. But this is so important to me because I'm I, in boxing, especially we had a, a mixed martial artist on here, Mike Bolger. And I oh, asked him the okay. same, you know, Mike, okay, perfect. Okay. So like I had him on, I asked him the same question. I'm going to ask you like theme song like what's your theme song like where does it come from like because music on this podcast to me like when we put our reels out when we put things on our story i get so many compliments on music and i feel so good about it because i think music just it, it can make wow. something more than what it is it makes something big yeah. humongous and like i'm just curious as your mindset where your mind goes with coming out music or even what music you work out with so I have a like a pre-mixed walkout song and it's it starts with Ready or Not by the Refugees. Oh, so like, yeah. not, here I come. And then it moves into Girl on Fire by Alicia Keys. That's great. So, that yeah, is so. oh, that is cool. That is a really cool <laughs> like intro and then into a different song i think yes. that that's awesome he came out to run this town and i thought it was great i'm like and so every so like trailer we put on for him we had that like going and i've seen him so many times since and uh he's such a good dude man he is uh he's hard working too he's another guy who's climbing and yeah um do you know a lot of people in the business i'm just curious in that sense too like do you know a lot of other boxes that circuit around or are you kind of just like locked in on you yeah, I mean, I, I definitely have like been to other gyms like sparring and things like that. So I've made a lot of acquaintances along the way and met a lot of people along the way, you know. Um, so yeah, I've definitely I've definitely met most of the people I think in New England that are involved in the sport. Yeah. Um, but not not everyone, but I That's I feel cool. like it's it's such I feel like the boxing community is pretty small in a way. So I do feel that I, I do know for the most part most people, yeah. That's real cool. And like, uh, so in boxing, like, cause you just said this, that made my mind go here. Do you like, in, like in football, like I coach football, we have scrimmages before our games. Do you have like scrimmages per se? Like you go into a different gym and you're going to be sparring with some other person that is your weight class, maybe similar rank, oh, yeah. things like that. Yeah. So that's mostly just part of like the, the camp. So you know, you require X amount of sparring hours or rounds, I should say, X amount of sparring rounds before each fight, depending fighting a four, a six, an eight. So yeah, um, I usually stop sparring a week out from a fight, but yeah, throughout my whole six to eight week camp, we're sparring two to three times a week. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> that That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I asked that more just because I really don't know, but it, mm -hmm. I find that so interesting because comparably in sports, I mean, that's how you get better. You go against teams similar in division or maybe playing a yeah. little bit better to kind of see where you stand a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, so 
I obviously I, I mentioned Vu in, in neighborhood brand and I kind of talked about that that kind of world of, of boxing. Do you are you finding yourself wanting to get more involved in that? Because you see it like in college sports now. I mean, kids are signing like all sorts of deals of different things. Do you maybe put yourself out there more now since you've come out of retirement per se? into the social media world to let people know who you are? Is that like, do they make, do they kind of talk to you about doing that? Or is that something more you just take care of yourself? So I think, so it's everything I, all my social media, I do myself. That's personally me. Um, I will say I more recently been more active on it because I realized the importance of it. Mm -hmm. For example, like if you look at somebody like Jake Paul or something, right. Who's like, on YouTube and like look at his the opportunities he's had look at the promotion you know he has his own promotional company and and he has all these big fights on these like on the big stage and you know so there's also like another another female um fighter who's brought herself up her name's Ebony Bridges right so she's she's another female fighter who's like hard on the social media like built herself up like very aggressively on a social media platform mm -hmm. which not only is she very skilled but because of that, she's gotten huge opportunity, right? So the I feel like the more followers you have, the more someone's gonna want you because that's more eyes for their for their viewing. Yeah, and that's like what I'm learning with this so much is like really getting followers because any business, like we have sponsors, which is great, but some businesses are like, oh, well, we want, you know, 7,500 followers or 10K followers and some people have that. Like some people also grew it fakely in a way, you know, because you can like yeah. buy followers and do all that stuff too. So like, you know, people that do it more naturally, there's like obviously even more respect for, it. but yeah, it's a hard, it's hard because like you're obviously proving yourself as a boxer and that's the ultimate way that you're going to do that. But along the way, you'd obviously like to be able to smile or hold something or wear something that is also going to help you out. I mean, that's, professional right. athletes have that in all their sports. Like you obviously seek that in yours. So um, yeah. no, I, I just find that so important. I really liked your page and, you know, I could tell it's funny you say that because you could almost tell when all of a sudden your maybe social media just picked back up. Like when I was kind of scrolling through, you can tell all of a sudden it was just more like the modeling shots, the video fights, like the, the quick little video things. Like you can just tell it like picked up and I was like, okay, cool. Like this is where she really probably started to grow on social media. I just find that yeah. interesting. Yeah. That was uh that time that I probably that big chunk of time that was gone. I actually retired during that. So that was the time I was retired and, um during that time I definitely went through like a lot of mental health issues like depression anxiety and like I don't think that I truly came to terms in my own mind with wanting to stop and retire so just even looking at my Instagram which was all based around my boxing I had a hard time even looking at it do you know what I mean so that's why I kind of I shut it all down and like just kind of decided to try to focus on you know, more personal life outside of social media, which is why I was off at that, you know, period of time. Yeah. And, and, and I get that. And, and thanks for sharing that. You know, I, I wanted to ask you about retirement, but I also, we didn't yeah. really talk about that. So I didn't want to like go there. Cause I didn't know what it was. So I really appreciate you sharing that and cool. being open because mental health is no joke. I mean, yeah. so many people go through it. So many people quiet about it. And uh, you know, it's good that you, you share that out there. I think that that's important. Thank you. I think, um, I think if it, it took me a minute to step back from boxing to realize how important boxing is for my mental health. And I really didn't realize it until I stepped back. And at first I was like, you know, yes, this is what I want. This is what I want. But being away from it, I was like, no way. Like I actually can't live without it. And I feel so alive doing it. I couldn't tell you, like I, there's nothing else in this world that makes me feel more alive than boxing and I wasn't ready to stop and I know I had more to do. Yeah. And what's so unbelievable is like, like I said, you notice that change, but yeah, in that change, what's the, like that passion, like you could just tell that yeah. it was just like all of a sudden it was just there. And I'm not saying it wasn't there on other things, but I just noticed it picked up. Yeah. Like it really yeah. picked up. Um, so good for you. Good for you. Sometimes you have to step away from something to realize that, that's the thing that you need. You know, that's the thing you maybe need most. Um, I, I, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I think that also like goes back to, again, like 
being in a new place and like having like a fresh start and like working with Danny and like, you know what I mean? Like I kind of, like I said, it re relit that fire and just learning new things. And like, I needed that. I needed that like fresh start to feel that again. Okay. So fresh start, new gym, getting back mentally into everything, like realizing this is your passion. Describe yourself as a fighter. I mean, if, if someone said, what's your fighting style? I mean, I don't know anything about boxing, but I did watch a couple of your things on YouTube. And if I had to make an assumption or, and you can tell me I'm like 0% correct too. And that's okay. It looks like you're just aggressive. Like it looks like you just kind of always are pushing forward you always hit with combinations at least the fight that i watched you fought like four rounds against i forget the the woman's name honestly um but i felt like you just like kept coming and she kept backing up would you say that's your style or am i like way off the map here um so i did i used to i was taught originally like to be like very aggressive non-stop coming like like kind of more like an inside type of fighter. So maybe and I watched an older fight then. Yeah. Okay. So most recently, since I've been at Sonny's, I've learned like, yes, I am going to be like the taller, most likely the taller girl in the fight because I am 5'7", fighting at 135, 140. So typically I will be the longer fighter. So mm -hmm. I've now learned, you know, now I have like, great footwork from working with Danny. Now I know how to use my jab. I know I'm starting to learn my range a lot better. Mm -hmm. So like I'm starting to come into my own. So I would say my, my style is probably like boxer puncher. I okay. think. Okay. So I, I like that. I, yeah. I can, I can punch really hard when I need to, but like I, I have like the finesse of like, like a boxer, like a traditional boxing style. So you're almost you're almost just kind of blending that style in a sense, like being able to be a bruiser, but also knowing when to just be technically sound against an opponent. Yeah, we'll do both. That's, That's what we're right. working on now. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm like looking here to see what fight it was that I was looking at. Um, I don't know. It might have been an older one, but I just felt like, I mean, you won. Like, I, I mean, you kind of destroyed her from being totally honest, but like... I, I felt like you just like, I was like, man, she reminds me of like somebody in a schoolyard, like a kid that you just like wouldn't want to go against because they just keep coming forward and coming forward and coming forward. And I was just like, holy moly, you know? So, and then obviously I've seen your videos and how quick your hands are too and your combination. So it's just, I don't know. It just seems like you're, you're, you're strong. You hit hard. Yeah. Like your style, like what you said, like boxer, but also just kind of a bruiser. Um, I wouldn't want to get hit by you, honestly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, since I've been coming to Sunny's, I've done a lot more like we've like been specifically focusing on like Oscar De La Hoya's style. So if you watch some of like Oscar's stuff, he like keeps you at his range. He like does, you know what I mean? He's in and out a lot. Um, but yeah, so when I, when I came here, Danny was like, watch a lot of Oscar, like study him, study him, study him. So like, that's mostly what we have kind of based our new style off of. How much film would you say you watch in a course of a week? I mean, do you watch it a lot or is it every so I, often? I try to watch some every day. Like okay. I like to watch it before bed. Um, but yeah, I mostly, I mo mostly focus on Oscar, but like I'll kind of switch it up sometimes. Danny got me into Roy Jones Jr. too. He's pretty slippery, which is cool to watch. So, so, I mean, I don't know enough about boxing to even make a guess, but like De La Hoya, Roy Jones, like what do those guys maybe do similarly that – is your style i just don't i don't know a lot so um i like i think i think they both have like great footwork okay. is something that sticks out most like most of all to me okay just how i mean that's all i heard about joe roy jones was just how like he was just so much faster than people i mean yeah. de la hoya was kind of like that too right but i just always yeah i always feel like i heard that with roy jones more than anybody oh yeah um all right, so you mentioned maybe your most memorable fight was punching that girl in the face at 21 years old, right? Like, but do you have a memorable fight? Is there a fight that stands out to you more than any, whether it's your first, your last, or just something that just stands out? Um, for sure, my most recent fight. So my most recent fight was against a uh, girl, Sarah Click, and she's the girl that I had the jar against. So it was a rematch. Okay, okay. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So that was the one that happened on January 27th. That yep. was my most recent one. Um, 
it was just kind of like, I think it was like monumental for like me and like my career because like I said, I had that fresh start. You know what I mean? I'm now with Danny, different coach, different gym, different style. And just to see like my growth from my second fight to my seventh fight. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like it just, it was, that fight was, it was really important for me. Now, was that your first fight with Danny? Nope. Second. Second. So where mm-hmm. did, where did the thought of a rematch come back? Like, how does that work? Like, did, was that something you want? Or was that or just the, the stars align, like kind of in a way for that? So that was kind of like a mix between like promoter and like the team kind of talking. So that's kind of how that all came about. It was just kind of like a, Hey, you know, what about so-and-so for this date, this date, that's kind of just how it goes. And we're like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Now, do you, I mean, is that how it kind of works as far as matchmaking? Are you somebody who's like, yeah, whoever they bring to me, they bring to me, or do you have to be strategic in this game a little bit about the style that you might go against? So I trust my team like fully in helping me make that decision. But I'll always say like who I, I completely, I have full trust in Danny. So like if he, you know, says let's fight this person, I'm, I'm not going to question him. I'll be like, yep, let's go. Right. So yeah. I really leave that up to like my team. They know my style. They know, you know, what I'm working on, what I need to work on, things like that. So again, it just all goes back to my team and like what, what we all decide on. That's cool. And then what's like, so I noticed like, it seemed like, obviously it was a kind of, like you mentioned, like a gap. I was just like looking, what is your ideal? Like knowing when you're going to have a fight, you're training, like, is that like a two to three month window after you kind of know who you're going to fight? I mean, how does that work for you? Because you're cutting weight, nutrition. I mean, there's a lot to that. It's not just training the fight. It's training to get to like a specific exact weight. Um, So talk a little bit about like, just how that works you find out your fight what what do you do from there so before I wasn't as active as I hoped I would be but now like we're we're adamant about staying busy staying active it's like actually detrimental um to basically continue to climb the ladder and and get to that world title I need to continue to stay active so yes like we, you know, we prefer to have like four fights a year right now so that's what like two three like you said two three months uh, in between. Um, and as far as weight goes, I will stay under, I'll stay around like 148, 147. That way, like if we do continue to fight at 140, I can fight um, at 135 or 140. So if we do continue to fight at 140, it's a very, very easy cut. Like that's it's like what, five, five, six pounds, really like w- water weight. Yeah. So as long as I stay under like that 140 150 148 mark like it's it shouldn't be too bad it comes right off in training where we're doing three a days yeah so two to three months you train so your turnover is decently quick then to the next mm-hmm. fight i mean you fight and then for all intents and purposes probably within a week or two you're having an idea who you might be fighting and then it's back to training yeah so that's exactly what happened in the the last fight so we fought end of november we fought end of jan so it was a pretty quick turnover. We had, I think, two weeks off for the most yeah. part in between. And then we just jumped right in. But it was good because I, I stayed in shape. Um, but it wasn't a huge adjustment. We just kind of tweaked the um, the conditioning aspect because I went from four rounds to six rounds. Okay. And, and and that's in glove size, correct? Um, Sorry? Did you, the four rounds and six ounces, That's glo- is oh, that glove sorry. weight? four rounds and six oh, rounds. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Ounces. Oh, no, I'm like, oh, is that in gloves? I was like, <laughs> I felt like a dummy. I was like, I got to ask. I don't know what she means. Okay. So I just misheard sorry. it. I apologize. Okay. Um, and then obviously that, that changes probably even your training a little bit because another two rounds of moving around, especially where you seem to be aggressive and kind of going forward a little bit. And so that's, that's more training for you as far as cardio goes, I'm sure too. Yeah. More, uh, more sparring rounds um, and different, like different, conditioning for running basically okay so fight night you get into fight night your last fight night obviously was a huge fight for you it was a rematch what's your mentality like here you seem like pretty calm cool collective laid back have a good time how does that change fight night like when you show up to the arena um i would say i'm (laughs) i'm normally like pretty chilled out for the most part um the week of the fight i'm a little bit more on edge like I'll be a little bit more testy. Like I'm getting down to weight, so like calories are low. I'm
tired from training. Um, right in there. Don't get the fight. Is there's not a whole lot that you uh, <laughs> there's not a whole lot that you do. Um, so it's like the anticipation is rough. So, but the day of the fight, I lock in. Like I wake up in the morning. I have like my my routine. I get up. I have a huge breakfast. Um, like the biggest meal of the day because that's what's gonna um that's what I'll be burning around fight night time. So I have a huge breakfast when I wake up, go get my hair braided for the day, come home. I usually take a nap and then, which is some people find a little bit weird, but it just, it's I, relaxing. I my, hey. yeah. Like I think it's like all the carbs I haven't been able to eat all camp. I like, it knocks it's, me tired. Out. it's like having a Turkey <laughs> dinner on Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I usually pass out. And then Danny will come pick me up and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll shoot to the fights and get to the locker room, chill out. I bump music. I listen to like podcasts and motivational speeches and things like that. Just get my mind right. And then that's it. We start warming up and before you know it, it's time to make the walk. And that's great. And then, and then boom, you mute your song pops on and, and you are ready to I'm go. Locked in. <laughs> I'm locked um, in. So what's what's the next opportunity for you now? Like, what do you got going on? Is there is there a fight already kind of in the making here? Are you waiting? Like, what, what do you got going on? Uh, so we're in the talks of early summer, um, like early summer, June fight. So that's what we're working on right now. I don't have a whole lot of details for you, unfortunately, okay. but um, we're in the talks of that. And I'll make sure to update you when we know more. Yeah, we'll post any of your stuff. So just let us know. And uh, and for you, obviously, anybody who does in any sport, they're obviously their their ultimate goal is the highest, the highest place. And you you've mentioned it a couple times on here, wanting to be world champion. I mean, for you, I mean, just talk about that reality for you. Like, it's a mindset. Obviously, you're you're six and oh, you know, six oh and one. Um, you're obviously someone that people. Uh, keeping an eye on i'm sure for you talk about like maybe the next year or two that you see in your in your boxing career like where you want to be where you hope to be um what you see for yourself and maybe you haven't thought that far ahead yet but just maybe what you see coming up for you so i definitely um want to stay busy that's yeah. like number one i want to like stay consistent which we will um and i also we've we've talked about signing with um, like a big promoter at some point. Um, so we'll, you know, be in the talks with some people in the future about things like that. Um, hopefully like more opportunity to travel and have fights in places like New York and in Vegas and, you know, places like that. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, I would also love to like train out, you know, have a camp out somewhere like in Vegas or like, camp in Cali like do do like, you know open up some opportunities and meet some people and get my face out there um and then yeah so that's that's hopefully what the next year looks like for us that's really <clears throat> many cool. more yeah listen we're we're huge fans I, I was like yeah we put your like one of your sparring sessions on our story and we got so many responses i'll screenshot some of them and send them to you but people were like oh. who is that you know like because it just looked like it looked like you were ready to fight for the title i mean I, i'm not just saying that because you're in front of me but that's like what it looked like you are i mean you, you're ready to, you're on call right now um <laughs> But yeah, just all the people that really talk so highly of you. Uh, and like I said, stalking your social media a little bit just to kind of see what you're up to. And uh, no, it's been great. And and we're huge fans of you here. And, you know, we'd love to come. We covered one of Mike's fights uh, and we put it on Instagram. You can check it out. I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, but we cool. could definitely do something like fun like that for you, too. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so we appreciate you coming on here and 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 spending time. I know you're nonstop training and working, so to give us like 40 minutes here, we really appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate you guys having me on. It really means a lot. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we'll be keeping our eye on you. And uh, without without any further ado, we are out, guys. So from Beyond Podcast, I'm your host Anthony Petrellis. Till next time.